wants to be a samurai and bury hatchets into demon oni skulls? I do, I do! Lucky for you, Team Ninja has heard the cry and delivered the sequel to the 2017 Souls clone. And yes, there is a plenty of hatchet burying for all. But is that enough for that $60 price hit? Okay, let's get it out of the way. Yes, Neo is heavily inspired by the Soul series, and the gameplay is very similar in a lot of ways. So, if you're not a fan of Souls, this series may not be for you. Now, with that caveat out of the way, holy shit is this game fun. Souls and Ninja Gaiden have had a baby, and that baby's name is Neo. The fast-paced, precise combat is fun and extremely deep. Nine separate weapon types, each with its own quick and heavy attacks for each of its three stances, high, mid, and low. On top of that, each weapon has its own skill tree with customizable skills for each of the stances. And that is just the weapons. But no samurai is complete without an arsenal of ninjutsu tools, including shuriken, poison, bomb, lightning feathers, yeah, lightning feathers. And the cherry on top are the magical abilities you can slot your samurai, fire weapons, enemy slowdown, steel skin. There's just so much there. And that's just the combat. There are a host of new systems the game slowly doles out over the 100 plus hour campaign for the player to engage with. Weapon fusion, item customization, and new to the game, but perhaps most important, are the yokai abilities and soul cores. New abilities that can seamlessly be comboed into combat, and they are awesome. All of which you will need to master a lot of just to work your way through the diverse levels of ancient Japan and the game and series defining boss encounters. This game is not a button masher. Each movement needs to be precise and deliberate or you will pay the penalty. And due to this, the game may feel too difficult or inaccessible for many. But honestly, at this point, you should know what kind of experience you're getting in for when you're buying one of these games. A war is ravaging Japan, and a demon Oni army is invading this world. It strikes me as an interesting premise and should make for some great and exhilarating set pieces. But does it? Kinda. Neo 2 doesn't look bad by any means. In fact, it's downright gorgeous. But I didn't get a sense of style or identity for many of the levels. The next fishing village looks too similar to the last fishing village. The forests look great, but there's no personality or uniqueness to them. However, this is a minor thing, it's my only complaint with the graphics. The world is very dense and beautiful and a blast to explore each level. The gameplay is smooth and both yours and enemy animations are fluid and graceful. The bosses are the real standout of the visuals though. They are a joy to stare at while a demon smashes your skull in. They are unique, stylish, and do a great job of establishing themselves as Neo bosses. The bosses are where the music shines through as well. It's a very Souls meets Ninja Gaiden tone that sells the urgency and intensity of each fight, and identifies each boss. Each sound is their own, and I can't say the same for each level. Again, it's not bad music, but it's just music. Believe it or not, Neo 2 has an actual story. It's technically a prequel, and it tells the story of ancient Japanese warlord Toyomoto Hiyadoshi. Yes, nailed it. And it tells this through historical fiction. Neo 2 actually splits this person into two separate characters. You, the main character, and Tokuchihiro. I don't think I nailed that one. And together, you will set out on a journey to unify a warring ancient Japan. It's a pretty cool premise, but the problem is the way the story is told. It's convoluted and confusing. It's too hard to follow who is who, and especially with the game's dialogue being in Japanese, it's hard to match names with faces. This makes the whole story confusing and doesn't allow for the great moments to really hit the desired buttons. The biggest plus again is the bosses. Many foes are people with tragic backstories and in that moment of tragedy they become corrupt and merge with yokai. These bits of lore are definitely the high point of storytelling in an otherwise incohesive convoluted mess. I 
can't imagine that once you've completed Neo 2's 20 main missions, 50 plus side missions, 100 plus hour campaign, mastered its systems and conquered its bosses, that you would even want to touch the game again for quite some time. Not only did I feel full after the game was complete, but I was actually overstuffed with content that almost seemed necessary just to complete the game. So replayability? Please God, no more. Despite my misgivings about some aspects of Neo 2's storytelling and world building, I had an absolute blast. The game absolutely nails what these games are about. The bosses are thrilling, and the combat is fluid and dynamic. And that's why we come to the Souls genre, and Neo 2 is certainly no exception. And is in fact a very welcome addition. Welcome to the club, Neo 2.